From a secret location in Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Give me a darn break. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different time. Radio Talk program. We're the Radio Talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing whacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TALK. 1-800-5-800-866. I'm looking at a piece from a newspaper called the East Arizona Courier. What is in East Arizona? You know, except signs that say 300 miles to New Mexico. Anybody name a city in East Arizona? Probably not. So you can imagine this is some desert town where some guy wrote an article. But we found it. And I'm going to read it right now. This piece is called, and again, it's an opinion piece called Without women, socks would not match. And it's by a guy named Walter Mayers, managing editor. <laughs> Which probably means he's the uh, most important of the four employees in the newsroom. Here is his piece, and I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit. To every man, Valentine's should be a day to honor the woman who has put up with him these many years. He was lucky to snag her. Well, was this guy's wife in there with a gun to his head when he was typing this? He knows it and she knows it. And that is why flowers are so significant, especially if they are not wilted or damaged. Many women send their husbands or boyfriends Valentine's Day cards, but this should be a day on which men drop the macho posture, get down on their knees, and thank God they have someone to care for them. There are, in fact, some men who are good cooks, do laundry, and keep their dwellings clean and organized. That, however, is probably a very small minority. Taking care of her man does not mean a woman should do all the cooking and cleaning, although a vast majority of women do. What country are you living in, pal? Is Eastern Arizona part of the United States? It says here a woman taking care of her man means far more than the daily drudgery of housework. A woman taking care of her man means hubby has someone to come home to. He has someone who provides stability in his life. He knows, even if it is only deep down inside that rock he calls a brain, that he would probably be little or nothing without her. Are you getting sick yet? Oh, this isn't done. Early on, when men are in their prime, many see marriage as a death trap. I don't go to funerals and weddings because they're one and the same. They're both depressing, a friend once said. He was in his early 30s at the time and boasted about being a confirmed bachelor. He finally gave in at 40, saying he'd grown tired of his own cooking. Fact is, he was a pretty good cook. Maybe he grew tired of his sister telling him his attire made him look like a rumpled, washed-up version of someone who almost achieved success. He knew how to do laundry. He simply did not seem to care how he looked. There's a reason to get married. You need a built-in stylist. Marriage now appears to agree with our former self-confirmed bachelor. He is a bit 
chunky and is quicker to run out of wind, but he smiles more. His temperament is not what it once was. Now he can take a joke when his sister affectionately calls him pumpkin boy. So isn't that great? Now he does his wife come in and make him fat. Take away all his freedom. But now he's so whipped, his sister makes fun of him for being fat and calls him pumpkin boy. And, and he can handle it. That's great that the woman came in there and fixed everything. This piece continues. Left to his own devices, he would probably be living out of a car. What? Or under a bridge somewhere, still eating soup straight out of the can. He would be able to grow a garden underneath his fingernails. His socks and underwear would be like arsenals with which to wage biological warfare. Without women, men might still be dragging their knuckles on the ground or grunting and beating their chests more than they do at football games. No doubt there were some men who think spending a special evening with their wives is a bit too warm and fuzzy. That does not fit the He-Man persona guys like to project. Perhaps they see themselves as the strong and silent type, kind of like Clint Eastwood and those spaghetti westerns. Ah, but men can be such fools. How many men would at this moment be walking the earth with mismatched socks were it not for women to tell them blue and brown do not go together? I got to tell you something. As somebody who does uh, keep an organized household, a clean household, as someone who does laundry and who does cook, I resent this propaganda. And it is propaganda because the more you keep repeating this nonsense, the more boys and young men are going to believe it. In fact, it is the reason probably that I kept getting married. It's because I believed that stuff. Because it was even when I was a kid that all this stuff about what's wrong with men began to be broadcast on television all the time. It began to be the subject of books and magazine articles and newspaper pieces. You know, everything from, uh, you know, men are too stupid to pick the right floor wax to, you know, men don't know what SUV to buy. I mean, it is constant, constant, constant. It's outrageous. It's outrageous. I don't believe any of this stuff that men are not capable of matching their own socks. That man would be living under freeway underpasses and eating soup out of cans if it weren't for women. This is just baloney. It's a load of crap. Trying to justify Valentine's Day and spending money and time with a chick, you know, ba ba based on this stupid stereotype. By the way, if you stereotype women like this, people freak. Trust me. But it's perfectly okay to do this to men. And some men are so brainwashed, they do it to, they do it to men themselves. It's outrageous, don't you think? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. He wanted to live with me, but, you know, the worst thing that he ever did was have me listen to you. Because the more I listen to you, the more I realize that... He's retarded. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. This is my The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. Steven on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. Steven. How you doing? Doing uh, okay. I do care. Doing great. Cool. Uh, I'm just calling in about the guy that uh, is writing this article. I think it's unbelievable, man. This guy is really pee whipped. He uh, obviously lost his balls, uh, and I'm just saying, you know, like this guy is—if he really thinks men are such low lives out there, be living underneath, you know, freeway underpasses without women—it's ridiculous. Yeah, no doubt about it. This woman. Oh, I take it. I take this as a real insult because uh, I do exactly what he says men can't do. Yeah, you. you Proving exactly like what, that he's wrong. Yeah. All right, Tom. I just wanted to say this guy's ridiculous. and just needs to find his balls again. And uh, think you could take me out uh, polka style? I can indeed, Stephen. Here you go. It's 
one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Uh, this is David on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. How you doing, man? I've been listening to you since uh, nineteen ninety eight, but I've never uh, never been able to call you. I've never really thought about calling. It you. finally uh, happened, for God's sake. No, you, you know, you know why? Because that. Uh, I'm right there with you. I'm incredibly offended uh, at that, you know, that article that you just read. Uh, I'm I'm a 27 years old, so I'm not only a man, I'm a young man, and uh, I live on my own. I cook for myself. I make the best pesto sauce that you can think of. I mean, I'm an amazing cook. I clean my own house. I scrub my own bathtub. I mean, and 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 I'm I'm just incredibly offended. Sometimes my house gets a little bit messy and the reason that is is because i have what's called a job you know and i have to work a lot and uh and when i have the time i i i'm able to you know be at home and and i take care of business but i'm incredibly offended by that i i sometimes you know when i'm dating girls uh the thing they miss the most is my cooking so yeah i, I you know it's an outrage and my problem with it is that i think young men read that and believe it no, it's it's ins- it's insane. I'm I'm a young man, and I'm nothing like that. You know, I mean, my my, and I'm not I'm not a metrosexual by any means. You know, I enjoy my evenings watching football, reading my NRA magazines, and cleaning my guns and getting ready to go to the shooting range as I'm eating my home cooked food. You know what I mean? Like, I'm incredibly offended. I have no idea where this guy is is coming from, and and I mean, seriously, the guy does need to uh need to really. I mean, he's 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 become a product of our of our of our society, feminized. And it, it's a shame. It's a shame. It's embarrassing, you know. So, well, it uh, as it, it, I just gotta say, it, it's it's what people say about men. It's what keeps you know they talk about women being kept down. It's what keeps men down. No, it, it's becoming that way. It's becoming that way. You know, sometimes I, I do date girls where they look. They, they have the audacity to say things like you're wearing that, and that's kind of when I'm like, yes, I am wearing that. If you don't like it. There is a door, you know? And, I mean, I've actually had to say that before. I have said that, too. You know, it's funny you say that. I I have used that exact phrase with more than one woman. Well, there's the door. No, it's... You know, it's, by, it's, by the way, you guys be being nagged all the time. <laughs> I got to tell you, this is a very effective line. It's important for you to know. When a woman starts critiquing or criticizing, you just tell her, there's the door. Yeah, and that's, and that's what I do. I mean, hey, I've, I've dated girls where the best time that I have is when they're gone. <laughs> you know, they're yeah. gone, and I get to sit down and just be by myself and just chill. You know, all these women are like, well, don't you get lonely? Don't you get lonely? No. You know, no, I, I don't. I don't. I mean, I have, like I said, I'm young. I make a fairly decent amount of money. I go out and I have fun with girls when I want to, when right. I want to. Yeah. And I go out and I have fun with my friends, you know, when I want to. And when I want to be alone, I get to be alone, you know. When I want to eat out, I eat out. You know, I do what I want when I want to do, you know. And, and it's just it's just embarrassing that, that this guy would write that article. I mean, it's, it's, it's really embarrassing, I think. So. I totally agree with you, David, and I thank you for the call. It's one 800 Hundred five eight hundred Tom, Jay on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Great. Yeah, good to talk to you. First time caller. Man, I'm listening to this. I'm in my car and I'm just like cracking up because, I mean, I hope there are no guys like believing this crap. I hope, and I hope no women are believing this. I mean, just think about it. It's men that created the automobiles that everyone's driving and created the airplane and skyscrapers where people have office buildings and they can work. It's men that have been, like, the greatest thinkers in the world. It's men that are, like, some of, like, the best chefs in the world are men, you know? Like, and I'm, I'm 32 years old. I've been cooking since I was, like, a little kid. I'm a really good cook. You know, every time I have a chick over my house, she's like, oh, your place is so clean and oh, God, your food is so good, and this, that, and the other. And, like, I've had girlfriends who couldn't cook, you know, worth a damn. So, I get this, this guy is, I'm, I feel sorry for this guy. He's, like, failed as a man. I, it's outrageous, just outrageous. Tina on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hi, Tom, how are you? I'm okay. Um, First-time caller, long-time listener, you make my drive home a pleasure. Love that. Um, I was just calling. I can't, I was completely shocked that the author of this article was a man. I am completely shocked and appalled as a female. I think that it's completely outrageous because, I mean, something as simple as 
what socks go with what outfit. I mean, you learn those fundamental color coordination skills in elementary school. I don't even know how he's applicking it to people. I mean, that females control that in a relationship. I think it stems down to, you know, no person should be more repressive in any relationship to the other as to, you know, shout commands as to who wears what and when to wear it. That's ridiculous. No doubt you're right about that. But that's what they, but by the way, Tina, that's what they do. I have an ex who you would think she had the best deal in the world. I was still doing a radio show back then. Uh-huh. And uh, she lost her job. And I said to her, all right, look, we can do it like this. If you want, uh, I'll go to work and make the money and you be the organizer of my life. Okay, so... You answer the phone, you uh, take deliveries when they come to the house, uh, you make appointments for, you know, socializing. Right, like an assistant. As a couple, whatever. And she was fine with that. I said, so the, the house is your domain. You handle it. And uh, after a while of taking that for granted, uh, uh, she started uh, to slow down on making meals to the point where there were hardly any meals being made. Then it got to the point where uh, I would come home at night and I'd say, it'll be 8 o'clock because I, you know, I work. And I've, I've always worked till at least 7, you know, so I would come home and say, okay, what's for dinner? And one night she said to me, I was hungry, so I already ate. Oh, see, that's a default in partnership. Like, if you're married and in, or in a relationship where you're like a partner, that's a default in partnership. Oh, it gets worse. It gets worse. So... So I said to her, do you understand uh, that it's not the food? It's the sitting down together and and having the ritual of having dinner at night. Mm -hmm. You know, you could have had some potato chips or something to get you through until dinner. And you come home so late. Yeah, well, guess what? That's the package you bought. So after a while, get this, I start to make dinner. I actually would stop home, uh, stop at like Bristol Farms on the way home, and I would pick up some stuff, and I would make dinner. And she would stand behind me with her arms folded saying, don't use that pan. Don't hey, use awful. Don't use that spoon. Use this spoon. Until finally I would turn around, I would say, you know, if you want to jump in here and finish this off, you're more than welcome to, which she didn't. Then finally it got to the point where I didn't want any more criticism when I came home from work. So I would bring a Subway sandwich home for myself, <laughs> and I would sit in the kitchen and eat it, and she would sit two weeks or two rooms away watching television while I ate by myself. That's awful. So, you know, when you say you find this hard to believe, Tina, I'm telling you, uh, this is the real world of the American woman. This is what's out there. Well, I don't think that it's, like, I understand that a lot of that depiction is female. I understand that. But, I mean, I think that in partnerships, there are people, some people, you know, when they feel less of themselves, they feel it's easier to put down that other person to build themselves up. And this article was like a a fine point of how, you know, women in that particular instance or partners in that particular position, you know, would validate to build themselves up. Like, this is your role, fit into this role. And I think that's disgusting. No doubt about it. So, but I just want to put my two cents out there that, you know, I know in a generalized population, some females or female role people feel that, you know, that that's their role. But not all of us do. Not all of us. Well, no one used the word all, but uh, I gave up on American women. Gave up. <sighs> Let's hope you don't cross over. <laughs> Cross over to what? Do awesome. other side. Come on, we need some some good looking guys, right? No, but here's the deal. It's not that I crossed over to guys. I crossed over to women from other countries. Oh, that works. Don't speak English. No arguments, right? Well, that's certainly a, a plus. No doubt about it. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Uh, let's say hello here to Fernando on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? How you doing? I'm doing okay. Yeah, this guy's, I don't think he has it all right, you know. I think what he's doing is he's pretty much saying the way he is, you know. And he doesn't think that men are that way. It's probably the way he is. Because I'm telling you right now, I've been uh, divorced for five years. I'm raising my own two kids. I kept my house. 
I ain't even collecting child support from this woman. I got it made, and I'm and I'm handling my stuff every day. No one. I don't need any woman in my life. I do go out on dates. I do date occasionally here and there, but I'm not definitely going to get married again. That's for dang sure. Well, but I'm hearing that more and more nowadays from people, especially guys. Uh, guys are going on a marriage strike. There's no doubt about it. Julia, on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Julia. You know what? I thought that the funniest thing about this article was the fact that guys today are, in fact, cleaner than women. You know what? I keep my bathroom how I want it. I have my makeup, my hair stuff. I don't even care. When it comes to boyfriends, I'm like, you know what? Truthfully, at this age, I'm 19, deal with my mess. And it's funny that this guy writes this article about how men need women to match their brown and black socks. Please. You know what? Guys today cook for themselves. They they do their own laundry. You know what? My ex-boyfriends all want, you know what? They all do their own clothes, iron their own clothes. They take care of themselves. They love it. They do it for themselves. And you know what? And my brother, my brother is the epitome of this nice, clean cut. His house, you know what, should look like what mine should. But, you know, it's a, I think it's absolutely despicable the fact that this guy puts this out like women today want to take care of these men i don't want to go and you know what i don't want to take care of these men i don't want to you know <laughs> clean up after their mess and i think it, it's great what is great i'm not i'm still not clear on that the fact that He's saying that we, as women, we take care of these men and we clean up after them when men, in fact, are cleaner. Oh, oh I, I see. Believe, okay. Than women. I thought you were contradicting <laughs> yourself. Well, that's the thing. I. It's so frustrating to talk about this because these stereotypes have infiltrated every part of our society: TV talk shows, TV commercials, books. Uh, you know, all these daytime shows where they're talking about how men are deficient in some way or another. Um, I, my attitude about this is, uh, number one, uh, the, the, several women, including the last woman I lived with, were complete slobs. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you could have looked around my house when I had someone living in it and seen ba it. balls of it. yarn and knitting needles <laughs> and dog toys and piles of paper and... Piles of wee wee pads for the dog to go on in case it was raining outside, and and all the other crap that was lying around. My house was a mess. Yep. And then yep. there were people who said, "Oh yeah, well once you break up with her, you know your life's gonna fall apart." You see my house now; it is spectacular. It is so I neat, so clean. I encounter so many men these days that are such actual clean freaks, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Really enjoy a clean household and do it for themselves, and don't expect a woman, a woman to do it for them. And, you know, I it's true. We, we get girls get so, you know, sloppy. We do. Right. And I think it's a crack up to think that, Women are going to come in and clean after these boys. By the way, you know, by the way, I should point out, if a, if a guy is really anxious to get married, chances are he is one of those boys. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I, for example, yeah. am not in any rush to get married. That's because I don't need a housekeeper. I know, I know, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it should be, a, by the way, if for women, it should be a red flag if a guy is really into the idea of getting married. That's a red flag. Well, you know what, Tom? Women get with boys because they'd rather be with a boy than an older man and because they, they'd rather be a, a, a nurse than a babysitter. You know what? Some women want to be a babysitter. Some women want to be a nurse. So, you know, they'd rather nurse an 80-year-old man who takes care of them or they want to be, be a babysitter to a boy who makes it fun. So who are we want to marry? You know what? None of them. None of them. Why? Why even do it? Makes a lot of sense. Are they interrupting a television show with an Amber Alert on the cable system? Are you kidding me? They black out the screen and they put an Amber Alert up there? You're kidding me. Thank God I've got direct TV, man. Look at that. I don't, I don't believe it. They just interrupted the show to put this. I mean, I, I, I don't want to see kids missing, but come on. 
interrupt a television program because one particular child has been abducted. Kids are abducted every day. What's more important than TV is right, Gary. <laughs> kidding me? Take my TV away so I can get an Amber Alert. <laughs> to me, the only Amber Alert is when the keg is running dry. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. I, I don't believe I'm looking at this. I can't even tell you to tune in because you'd have to live in the area of this cable system. But they just black out the screen. What is that Channel 9 they're blacking out there? So they just black out Channel 9 and put an Amber Alert up there. They're watching the news uh, or whatever's on now. And uh, there it is. Amber Alert. In English and Spanish, it crawls across the screen. And they can't just superimpose it over the picture on the TV show. They just black out the show. Holy cow. Can you imagine if, like, the programmer for Fox had a very important show running during Sweeps Month? And the way to uh, keep people from seeing it would be to uh, abduct a child so the TV picture gets blacked out. Or during the World Series or something. You'd be giving people incentive to do something like that. Stupid. By the way, I'm looking at this Amber Alert. It doesn't even tell you, like, the name of the kid or, or a description of the kid. That's great. Anyway, it's painful sometimes. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. We're talking about a piece written by a gentleman who lives in eastern Arizona. Whatever is there. And his piece was called, Without Women's Socks Would Not Match. Do you agree with that? Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You'll be glad to know when I did the DTB email I got from my girl said, and if I hear the name Tom Likas one more time, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. Let's say hello here to uh, Edward on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. Hey. Uh, I'm 38, married with two kids, and you have no idea how offended I am by, by that stupid little, I don't know, Arizona man that wrote that article. I cook, I do laundry, I wake up the kids in the morning, I wash them, I feed them, take them to kindergarten, go to work, come back, pick up the kids, do the same thing, feed them. And for the past two weeks, I've been alone with them. My wife is in Europe, her dad just passed away, and I'm doing everything by myself. And I don't know what to tell you. Where, where, where and doing it well, I'll bet, too. My house is speak and span with two small kids. And I have no uh, uh, maid that comes over. And I bake my own bread, too. Wow. Okay. And, and for the past two weeks, yes, it gets messy daytime. At nighttime, everything is back to normal. Is and that so? I love it. You know what? Even before I got married, I was dressing even better than right now. I had to look good. <laughs> really? It's, it's, I, I cannot believe that there are men like that out there. It's outrageous. And I just hope some young boys don't read that. I'll tell you right now. 1-800-5800-TOM. Samson on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Great. Check this out, man. This guy needs to grow his balls back. For all you guys out there that think metrosexuals, you know, we're homosexuals and stuff like that, I was a metrosexual before the term came out. I am six five and a half. I am 300 pounds of pro football muscle because I play pro football. I will kick all these fools' asses. I've been 600 pounds. I squat 700 pounds. And you know what? I've been with my girlfriend for three years. I have never once been to a chick flick with her. I have never once held her purse in public. Okay? I've never even gone out with her. On Valentine's Day, I have my balls. Love that. Here's the thing. Not only that, I told her, A, I'm never getting married. I love this woman to death. I want to spend the rest of my life with her. I told her, I'm never getting married. I even told her I'm not even going to have kids. If you don't like it, there's a door. 
Wow. I look, I look good as hell, dude. I look good as hell. Everybody knows it. I, I dress. I, dude, right now, I'm wearing a three-piece suit. I had to take care of some business. I, I run my own uh, security business. I look good as hell. I take care of myself. I even shave my legs, Tom. Are you serious? Yes, I am. I, I've been doing. I've been doing this last twenty years, and you know what? Everybody knows I'm still a man's man. I go out and I shoot my guns. Not only do I, not only do I watch football, I play football. People are asking me. Everybody wants me to come to their Super Bowl party. What's what's my analysis on how the games are going to go? Wow. You know, yes, it's called having your balls, man. You know the funny part about it is everybody thinks I should be your co-host. Cause check this out. Oh, I got to thank you real quick. I got to thank you because. You, when you uh, talked about that home DNA kit, yeah, a buddy of mine who said he lived the Tom Likas show. I called in, I couldn't get in that day. He said he lived the Tom Likas show. His dumb ass was hitting, was uh, was having sex with a condom, got his stupid girl pregnant, had twins. I went out, I bought, I bought that kit for him. I said, you need this. I gave it to him at the, at a, I bought it for his uh, for a Christmas present. And people were like, oh my god, we can't believe that you would do such. I said, you know, forget that. His dumb ass needs to go ahead and get a test. I'm the only, only difference between me and him and anybody else. I have the balls to do it because everybody knows that's how I am. So it's all about having your balls. So all you little fakers out there, you know, you talk, you know, good game and stuff like that. If you're going to a chick, a chick flick with your woman, uh, uh-uh. uh, don't even. I don't want to hear anything about your mouth about metrosexuals. I wear silk shirts. You know what I mean? I'm clean shaven. What? I still take your ass. <laughs> this dude needs his ass kicked big time, dude. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? See, I, I, I come with it, dog. And everybody, they don't like, oh, my God, we can't believe you. You're No, I'm the real deal. I'll prove you. Know, I don't even have to prove it. Everybody, they tell me. Look at you. Outrageous. Now, Alan, I'm finding this hard to believe. You're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I yes. just, uh, I wasn't letting you know, I heard that, uh, I'm listening to 971 and they, uh, preempted you with that Amber Alert that you were just... Are you serious? About. Yes. Yeah. That's it, outrageous. Uh, it, went, it went on for like, probably a minute, I didn't count it, but like a minute or, uh, a little oh. longer. Then they finally came back to you. And what did it sound, what did it sound like, uh, like an EBS test or something? It sounded like, uh, this is just, a, the, 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 this is just a test? Yeah, some, uh, told me this is the L.A. County. Oh, the wrong button. That's the L.A. County. This button isn't doing anything now. Hello, okay. hello. Oh, this is the L.A. County Sheriff's Department on Wednesday at 4.25 p.m. A uh, little girl, age three, is missing. They, they interrupted programming for that? It was exactly like that, Tom. That's outrageous. I just, I just wanted to let I you mean, know. I mean, put it in the newscast, fine. Run it during a break, fine. Interrupting programming for that? Yep. Holy cow. Well, I just wanted to let you know, Tom. I didn't mean to upset you. But I, but no, I'm, you know. I'm glad you told me. The dean says we're getting a lot of calls. But... Hey, will you take me out with the 97.1 jingle? You want me to take you out with the 97.1 jingle? <laughs> Do we have any of those uh, over there, Art? He has, he's got to look for it. Because, see, we're here we're, we're, we're here in another studio. We do, we do the show for the network. So, uh, okay, we had to look for it. We found it. Here you go. Doesn't that violate one of the rules of music? Like, the lyrics are supposed to fit the number of bars in the song or the number of notes? I imagine a music chart with the last couple of words just hanging off the end of the page. <laughs> Unbelievable. Do we have my name shout jingle over there while we're in it? Uh, see, I'm, I'm asking you all the tough questions today. Oh, all right, yeah. I, mean, I told you I've got my own name shout jingle now. <laughs> no, they probably paid a few hundred bucks for that. That means they can't fire me during this rating period at least. Because they, <laughs> they, they want to burn off money on that jingle. 
one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Uh, let's say hello to Peter on the Tom Likas show. Tom, how you doing? Doing okay. First time, long time. Hey, listen. Uh, this whole, so, what's this topic about? If you don't have a woman to talk to a match. I mean, I think that's con, you know that's completely ridiculous. That's the name of the piece. Yeah, I didn't hear it all because I was on another phone call, but uh, I can speak on behalf of all my friends. It's like we don't. I cook for myself. I, I'm not a clean freak, mind you, but uh, I cook for myself. I, I take care of everything myself. You know, I've been unmarried for a long time. Um, I will say, uh, you know, maybe a woman can bring that extra female touch. Like when I was, my last girlfriend I had, you know, you know, she, after she spent the night, you know, she, she'd make the bed in a nicer way that I, I, I couldn't get that kind of detail. And, you know, that's fine and good. But for the most part, I think all women need to know that no, we take care. I can take care of those things myself. I mean, um, I, I want to live in a clean place because because I want to live in it. You know, I can take care of myself when I do whatever. Decide to you know make a commitment with the woman, whatever that is. She, you know, I, I'll already be independent. You know, and so she won't have to you know to worry about things like that. And uh, it's just, I think a majority of men are like that now. I mean. Well, I think, Mike, well, 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 one thing that's happened, one thing that's happened, well, one thing that's happened is the median age for a man's first marriage has gone up to 28 years old. 28! Oh, yeah. Which I think yeah. is fantastic, by the way. Yeah, my brother just got married, and he's four years younger than me. I hope it goes up to 48. You said 28? Yeah, I know it is 28. I hope it goes up to 48. Well, I'll have to <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen. Well, why not? You're 48, and you decide to marry your 21-year-old girlfriend because now yeah, you're ready no, to settle suppose, down and have yeah, kids. For, for men, yeah, I, I suppose it could go. You're, we're just talking about men. Yeah, yeah, no, you you have a point. I, I yeah, I, but I think uh, with women, they have to get married sooner, and so so usually with a guy that you know is within five or ten years of their age, so the guy feels you know. That they need to get married too. Oh no no no! They want to have kids, so they want to start early as possible. And, yeah, but you, you know, that. guys with money, power, and fame, they can stay. Uh, they can stay unmarried as late as they like, and then get a young one. Uh, real quick, Mike. Real quick. Real quick. Mike. Hello. Yeah. What's up, Tommy? Hey, I, 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 well, I got interrupted. I guess we're not going to find out. The Tom Likas Show.